Hi again. So this is, this is really, really cool. Because, and I'm going to call you Angel because I'm, I don't speak Spanish, sorry. Angel's great. OK. Good Thank afternoon, you. everyone. How are you all doing? So please, Angel, tell us yeah. about your career and why you find yourself here today. Sure. Well, th thank you, and thank you for having me. And th it's amazing conference. You all having a good time so far? I have so many colleagues I haven't seen physically in, in you know in a while, right? And to see people again physically is just so rewarding. I think we're I think we're back to pre-pandemic. Uh, I don't know where Grizz is, but he he might be able to tell us statistically. But I think we're back. We are. Well, well, look, my open source journey, much like everyone else's, started in Arecibo, Puerto Rico. No, you didn't start there? No. <laughs> Programming IBM 370 assembly language. And, and why does it start there? Because I was the beneficiary of someone else who gave me access to a machine where I could program IBM 370 and share knowledge. Now, fast forward like everyone else, right? You get excited. You get excited about what I call the three C's, code, content, which is learning, and community, people, right? And I was so lucky because um, this other person took me under his wing, and this was Sir Tim Berners-Lee. And I got to co-author many of the web standards that, that, that uh, you know, we enjoy today, right? Uh, I, I attended the, some of the JavaScript uh, sessions and so forth. So it's so exciting to see these things put into action. But the career continued. Spent a lot of time at IBM. I think IBM's done some good stuff in open source over the years, right? And, uh, and with the Linux Foundation to see this kind of second renaissance, which is the concept of bringing these open source stars together into constellations, foundations, right? Uh, and having the honor of, of working with a lot of you on the uh, uh, JavaScript Foundation, the Cloud Native Computing Foundation, which has just grown uh, immensely to see foundations like the Risk Five Foundation, hardware, that, that bridge between hardware and software and user interaction. There's just so much going on. So it, it's been, it's been a, a real fun journey. But let me just say one thing. I've learned a lot in that journey. And, and, and as I said, I was the beneficiary of others. A lot of you have spent a lot of time in open source. And with great power comes what? responsibility. So you all have to be the beneficiary of someone else. Give them a hand, right? You know, there was a, there was a great, I think you had the statement around um, chopping wood and carrying water, right? So that's how you enter a community. You chop some wood, you carry some water, right? But someone's got to help you chop that wood and carry that water, right? You don't know how to write documentation. You might not know Markdown, right? Well, okay, get started, get going, and then you build your career. My personal favorite, I know I'm, I'm, I'm supposed to be biased toward financial services. I spent my whole life in financial services. My personal favorite is the Academy Software Foundation. They make really cool looking stuff. So, um, so having spent your career in technology, um, now you see open source coming to financial services and now you've joined Discover, which is a financial services company. What, what do you see? What, do you see technology best practices now beginning to influence other industries? What's your perspective on this? Yeah. You know, there's so much good in open source that in financial services, when you look at how open source communities work and how we as an organization, right, need to work, you can just copy those principles and get better every day which is, by the way, one of our behaviors, getting better every day. So I'm at Discover. We have a card, we have a bank, we have payments. Hope you all have Discover cards. Fantastic product. What? If, you don't, if they don't, they will by the end. They of will day. by now. But, but, you know, like all companies, right, you know, we're obsessed with delivering better financial futures to our customers. That's fine. But how do you do that? Right? It starts with thinking about the customer, the customer journey, right, their digital journey. The concept of digital journey is sophisticated. We are sophisticated people now. We, do, we demand many different things. And if our technology infrastructure does not match the demands of what our clients need, you have a problem. 
right? If our people aren't skilled and don't share, like in an open source community, then they can't adapt quick enough, right? If our processes aren't agreed to or community driven, it's hard to cross pollinate between teams, right? So for us, we took this open source concept of code, content, community to build our way of working. So we established an, an inner open source academy. We called it Discover Technology Academy. It's a fantastic place. Engineers share code patterns, reuse patterns, golden paths. Andrew gave a presentation on golden paths. Very well done. Uh, you know, knowledge of how we do things, as well as articles, blogs, tutorials, videos. And then we have a, a kind of a plus one mechanism to define our own methods and standards. Everything from how do we do design thinking practices, empathy maps, personas, journeys, how do you write user stories, how, do you, how many code branches do you want to have in GitHub, how do we do logging within the logging infrastructure, how do we run, how do we operate, right? And that approach allows us to move faster and allows us to better service our customers. So here at Finos, one of the things we have is the uh, open source readiness special interest group. And we spend a lot of time, as Gab mentioned, trying to educate um, financial services um, companies on how to participate in open source. And, you know, a lot of the first reactions we get from people who, you know, uh, financial services tends to be kind of closed model, um, you know, everything is special secret sauce, you know, can't share anything. And now we're trying to do something where peers, potential competitors are working together on something. So for heavily regulated industry, wh whose initial knee jerk reaction is no to sharing, what, how would you advise them to begin? You know, this is a topic of discussion at our SIG all the time, but what's your perspective? And that is a great SIG, a plug to your SIG, because it is, a, it is a great place to come together and talk about shared experiences. You know, I'm new to financial services. You know, I, I've been a, I'm a technology person, horizontal technology person for many years, and I'm learning very quickly. But there's nothing slow about the financial services industry, <laughs> right? Yeah, there's regulations, there's things that we need to follow, and, and so process, and we do that. But it is fast paced, and it is moving. Right, and uh, so I think the, the best advice I have there is to bring folks together to understand the, the value of using open source to better serve your outcomes and your clients. And I'll give you a couple of examples. Uh, you know, in Discover, we, we participate in, in many open source. We con consume a lot of open source, like all of you, right? But we also participate in open source communities. We're not as visible perhaps as others, but we are out there doing stuff. APIs, right? Packed for testing APIs. We all do that. You know, we find that there's a certain kind of function or capability we need because of a particular regulation that we, that we need to follow. So we've got a choice. Fork it. Who wants to fork it? Raise your hand. Everybody happy with forking? No? You are? Well, I was at the Electron presentation. I was given a strong no on the fork for Electron. <laughs> but look, I, I like to fork things too, by the way. But no, you don't want to fork it. You do it in the community, right? Because then all of a sudden you get the capability, others get it, right? As a person who runs engineering, you, you lower your cost of ownership, right? You don't have to maintain forked code. You know all the good stuff that happens, right? So when you have those types of discussions internally, it becomes very clear. It becomes very clear that sharing is caring. Now, there's one more dimension to this. And someone mentioned it, I think it was one of the panel sessions you were, you were hosting earlier. When it comes to people, right, the, the, the heart of an organization is, is, is the human, is us, is people, right? And you want to build your craft. You want to get better, right? There is no better way of showing or learning than having to teach or contribute. When you're standing on stage teaching, like giving a technical presentation on something, Trust me, you know that topic because you're worried you're gonna get asked a question you don't know, right? So by empowering your employees to participate in open source, they get better, which means your organization gets better. And everybody wants those little badges and, that, and those little you know, 
merit badges he put on the LinkedIn as well. So that's a good thing too. Yeah, so empowering your employees, that's, that's sort of, um, you know, kind of a top-down enablement. But then I think also what you're talking a lot about is bottoms up, sort of pushing up on, on your management from an engineering perspective. And I think that's a very interesting topic here. There, so I, th I believe there's a lot of engineers in the room, a lot of people who participate in open source every day already. What would your advice be for them and how they can influence their organization and, and sort of lead from, uh, from their perspective? Yeah, well, you know, uh, building products is a team sport. Right, and uh, you know, building technology is a team sport. Uh, I, I hope everyone has an equal seat at the table with their business colleagues. You know, we certainly do in Discover, right? Because you have this art of the possible discussion. You know, did you know that you could do this? Because sometimes our colleagues in business doesn't know, right? Or the business folks says, "Hey, we would really like to do this, and we just didn't understand the use case. Right? We just didn't get it." So it's that working togetherness is what allows this spin wheel to move faster, faster, and faster. And again, not everything needs to be, you know, big external efforts. A lot of this starts internally. That's where I started. This gene, this kind of sharing is part of our culture and it's part of what we do internally as well. I mean, we have so many inner open source projects. All of our code is inner open source. We work together internally. And again, it's not just code, it's knowledge goes back to the chopping wood and carrying water, right? It's documentation. I know documentation sounds boring, but it's not boring when you have a, you know, your, your system is down and you're looking at the code and you don't know where, where anything is. Trust me, all of a sudden documentation becomes real good, important, right? So, uh, so yeah, that's, that's, I think, the, the best way to do this. Yeah, I think sometimes, you know, showing Shameless plug, the art of the possible is, is very, it speaks a thousand words. So bringing some of those, go see the demos during lunch, bringing some of those ideas to your business partners as a start, and then to your point, contributing and making that idea better because probably other people have had a similar idea, but you can add that little extra twist to it and re-contribute that back, make their product better, and then gain from that, that's something you can do. So again, check out the demos during lunch and during break. So Discover is coming to Finos and, and joining this community. Um, why Finos? There are lots of other open source places to go. But Jane, you're here. Oh, thank you. I was I mean, waiting for this all day. Right? I mean, she's <laughs> and Gab. And Gab. No. Look, um, you know, at Discover, we're involved in so many aspects of open source because I keep on going back to product development lifecycle. It is not just code, right? It, you know, the concept of customer journey. Everyone, everyone hears something called design ops, right? Which is going from design thinking to implementation in a round robin kind of way without doing that PDF handoff to your UI UX engineers, right? There's just so many different places, let's say in horizontal type of technology where I think we've got very strong um, needs and opinions and, and, and want to collaborate around use cases, business cases and contributing code. So, so there's kind of, think of that as the horizontal. Now, then, then people distinguish horizontal to vertical, right? Which, oh, well, if, you, if you squint at it, everything is horizontal. But, but yes, you can say there's some things that are vertical. But it's the same exact reasoning. You know, when you look at what our customers do car, across card, our bank, our payment systems, right? There's some, and it's not uncommon. Like our customers are, are humans. We're all, we do these things every day. We all benefit, right? So when you look at those use cases, there's opportunity. There's opportunity, and what better place to have those discussions around that opportunity than an organization, well, I guess it's the world's largest organization for financial services, right, for open source, than here. It is, it is. So it goes back to where I started, because of you, Jane. <laughs> and Gabriel, I'm sure he's here somewhere. Oh yeah, he's, he's listening. <laughs> so um, how should, 
people think about engaging with Discover? And, and what, how would you like to invite the community to participate with you? Absolutely. Well, you know, check us out on GitHub. <laughs> that's, that's the best place to start. But, um, you know, uh, I think as we uh, get more, let's say, visible as an organization, because I started off saying we do a lot in open source, but we don't talk a lot about it, right? We don't share that. We, we, we'll start to do more of that uh, and, and, and try to, you know, be more visible. I think it'll become very clear how we can start collaborating in, in organizations like Finos and Cloud Native Computing Foundation, the JavaScript Foundation, other places, you know, you'll, there'll be great opportunities to do that. And of course, I get lonely sometimes. So if you want to like hit me up on the LinkedIn, that's okay, you know, or the, or the Twitter or the Insta, you know, or whatever else there is, <laughs> just, you know, that, that, that's a great way too. So you, you, you are, this very interesting advice. You're giving a lot of really good advice for engineers to, to kind of lead, lead and, and start plus oneing and, and bringing other people along and, and, and sharing ideas. And where we started was you've had a very, very long journey and you've been the ambassador of open source all this time. So um, any, any closing thoughts, any, any sort of suggestions? What would, you, what would be your first call to action for everybody here? Yeah, I, I mean, it's, 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 real, it's real clear. I mean, look, we know this. There's been an amazing democratization of technology. I started about this IBM 370 stuff. Like, who, who programs an assembly language other than maybe me? <laughs> Not many people, right? But then you have functional programming, object-oriented programming, et cetera, et cetera, et cetera. We, we, we live on the shoulders of giants, right? So this democratization of technology allows us to deliver value faster, right? But we also said, with this power comes responsibility. responsibility. Yes, right? So the one thing I'd leave you with, because everybody here, you're here because you're leaders of something, right? You're leading your organization. You're leading an open source project. So this is the best group to give this little nugget to is to help somebody else move forward into the community and leverage those practices for good, right? And whatever that may be, maybe good for your organization, good for their career, good for open source, you get to define what that means. Yeah, so before, as we were coming up, I said that I was talking to someone last night and they said, oh, well, you know, this is really great, but for my business area, there's really not much here. And I said, well, you can start it. You can come here and share your ideas. If you don't see what you need, bring it to us and we'll help you get up here <laughs> and talk about it. So yeah. Thank you. Thank you very much for this and, and thank you for all you're doing for open source and for your ambassadorship and please engage and engage with Discover and, and we'll see you guys out there and visit the demos. Thank you. Seems